Rogers, this is quite possibly the dumbest argument ever given voice to on national airwaves about John McCain and torture. He should not be allowed to talk on torture because he is clearly somebody who went to unspeakable pain and punishment. What do you mean he shouldn't be allowed to talk? He, she has an opinion like everybody else. He represents he, the state of Arizona. But he was tortured. He was tortured. Therefore, and his views on torture are, are irrelevant skewed. because of what happened to are him? Are skewed. I think his views are particularly telling. But what do you think he's going to be pro-torture after no, he's been through he's it? he's not going to be pro-torture. And, and plus, I don't think this is torture. So you're saying, Brian, that the conclusions of a victim of torture might be neither accurate nor reliable? Michelle Malkin writes, I've blogged for years about the spread of contagious diseases from around the world into the U.S. as a result of uncontrolled immigration. We've heard for years from reckless open border ideologues who continue to insist there's nothing to worry about. And we've heard for years that calling any attention to the dangers of allowing untold numbers of people to pass across our borders and through our other ports of entry without proper medical screening as required of every legal visitor immigrant to this country is racist. I thought that this line, though, was very ironic this morning in one of the articles that I read about surveillance at the Mexican border. You thought that we had an immigration problem. Well, now they might actually want to prevent the six people, sick people from crossing over the border. Chaos in Mexico. From earthquakes to swine flu, will it mean more illegals heading for the U.S.? Does anybody wish maybe we could control the border just a little bit at this point? And everybody's emailing going, the, the illegals are bringing it across the border. Relax. Tonight. Wine flu spreads from Mexico to the United States. Is this the latest border crisis? The U.S. is not currently testing travelers from uh, Mexico, but customs officials are wearing protective clothing. Illegal aliens are carriers of the new strain of human swine avian flu from Mexico. Is this a terrorist attack? Some, though, say the solution is to close the border. Now, talk that we should even close the border? If this is so important, why haven't we closed the border? There's the bioterrorism angle. What better way to sneak a virus in this country than to give it to Mexicans? Wouldn't it be great if we had a secure border? The, the club for growth is not universally popular in the, in the Republican Party. I mean, you know what, you know what um, Huckabee said about the club for growth? Look, this no. was a year ago, December. I interviewed him. He said he called it the club for greed. He called it a despicable political hit organization that has no integrity and is cowardly, has a disregard for the realities of how you actually govern. He said governing would be very simple under their formula. It wouldn't require an IQ above broccoli to do it because you just go and you say we're going to eliminate all taxes. That's, right. that's the club for growth. That's what the Republican Party, right. that's one of the corners they pointed, painted themselves into. Budget. But, but Congressman, are you, are you willing, we saw in Britain recently, as they dealt with their deficit, they raised rates on the, on the upper echelon. Would you consider raising rates even for a short period of time <clears throat> on those super rich, if you will, not even the top 2%, but above that, those making north of $10 million in income? Here's the problem with that kind of economics. What? So uh, the answer is no. But in, let, me, let me give you the reason why no. You got to remember, more than half of the folks filing the, at these tax rates are small businesses. Seventy percent of our jobs in America come from small businesses. To Mike Kilburn, County Commissioner of Warren County, Ohio. You remember Warren County, part of the still unexplained terror threat lockdown on election night 2004. The commissioners there are rejecting $373,000 in stimulus money for three new buses and vans meant to get the country's or the country uh, the county's rural residents to health care and educational opportunities Kilburn said I'll let Warren County go broke before taking any of Obama's filthy money I'm tired of paying for people who don't have as Reagan said government is not the answer it's the problem if I was Tim Plante, I think I let the whole thing play itself out before I took the drastic step of actually certifying it particularly given all the accusations back and forth all the money and by the way all the stakes as well because what this is really about is 60 votes in the United States Senate and votes such as card check coming up on the agenda in the Senate yeah the real, real issue is 60 the real issue well, is really 60 Texas is a unique place uh, when we came in the Union in 1845 uh, one of the uh, issues was that we would be able to, to leave if uh, we decided to do that my hope is that America and Washington in particular uh, pays attention. Uh, we got a great union. Uh, there's absolutely no reason to dissolve it, but if Washington continues to thumb their nose at, at, at the American people, 
you know, who knows what may, came up, uh, uh, may come out of that. We in Texas are, uh, I think, the most patriotic of Americans, and, and Governor Perry was just revved up. I think he was excited and expressing the intense frustration, Chris, of every Texan that I know who is concerned about this government in Washington, this new liberal Congress, this new liberal president. The core point here is that Texans have a special feeling in our heart about what it means to be an American. And to be an American means the government should leave me alone. Get off my back and get out of my way and get who out of my wallet. We don't want the government running who, our has that who has that special feeling? More than anyone else, I think Texans have a special feeling in their heart about what it means to be an American. The core values that made America you know great are the sounds. values that made Texas great. You know how great. absurd, Congressman Conway. You say that you guys are more emotional about your Americanism, and yet you've got a governor talking about splitting from America. You know how He's absurd not that serious sounds. About governor Perry. Well, I not think he did it all week this week. Don't you don't say you love the country, but you can't wait to leave? You're threatening to leave it. Of course, it doesn't make sense. I'm just telling you. Chris, the governor Chris, you're the one whipping this up. Tape? Nobody, we well, he said it, tapes. I think, in the, Chris, I think he said it in the heat of the moment. He was revved up. He's not serious about it. No Texan wants to leave the union. Okay, well, We're, I think, among the most patriotic of Americans. Okay. Well, we've had plenty of conversations, but I must say I'm disappointed after two months. Uh, the president has not governed in the middle as I had hoped he would, but it's not too late. He's only been in office a couple of months. And still before him are the opportunities to deal with us on a truly bipartisan basis. McConnell wants President Obama to deal with Republicans in a truly bipartisan basis. Well, that's interesting because remember when President George W. Bush was in office and Republicans, led by Mitch McConnell, controlled the Senate? When Democrats asked for less partisanship and more cooperation, Mitch McConnell accused Democrats of being obstructionist. He said, quote, how can we have bipartisanship in the Congress if Democrats will not take yes for an answer? And here's what conservative columnist David Brooks wrote today. The GOP leaders have adopted a posture that allows the Democrats to make all the proposals, while all the Republicans can say is no. They've apparently decided that it's easier to repeat the familiar talking points than actually think through a response to the extraordinary crisis at hand. Well, that was a tough critique by a conservative columnist, Congressman uh, Pence. Where do you respond? Well, I respond that, again, we see the administration and many commentators holding up some straw man about how Republicans simply want to be the party of no. You know, we had an alternative stimulus proposal that was built on tax relief for working families, small businesses, family farms, and some responsible investments in the economy. Here's Rush Limbaugh today with his thoughts. It's around nine minutes to one Eastern time on March the 10th, and I, L. Rushbo, proclaim this war is lost. But on the issue of taxes, I think it's 43% of people who file taxes pay no income tax at all for the middle uh, fifth of taxpayers. Uh, they're paying just about 3% in federal income tax this year. Well, you want to go out and explain that to the hundreds of thousands of people around America, uh, that showed up for these rallies, uh, they understand that uh, they're paying too much in taxes. I want any force, any person, any element of an overarching big government that would stop your success, I want that organization, that element, or that person to fail. So I don't think there's a thing wrong with him saying this. Do well, you agree with Rush Limbaugh that we, we shouldn't hope for President Obama to succeed? We should right, exactly right. This I want, country, his, I, I want his policy to agenda to fail because that'll help the economy. If, if you, uh, when he proposes uh, the same kind of wealth redistributionist policies that uh, appalled me under the Bush administration, yes, I hope they fail. Here's Rush Limbaugh. He makes a great analogy with football regarding Barack Obama. I wanted Warner to make the biggest fool of himself possible. Of course you don't want him to succeed. If he succeeds, that's bad for capitalism. That's bad for free markets. If Obama succeeds and the country goes down the tubes, everybody gets what Rush has been saying. Should we hope that President Obama fails? Yes. Yes. If, if, absolutely. He, uh, we hope that his policies fail.